Welcome everyone to LinkedIn for Career Changes. My name is Sue Elson and whether you're joining me live or on the recording, absolutely, especially welcome to you all. I will be putting some questions in the chat. I invite you to put questions in the chat. And whilst we're waiting for a few other people to arrive, I'm just going to showcase the LinkedIn experiment video that's on YouTube, because I think it really describes LinkedIn very well and perhaps even better than I can. So uh, here we go. Was passiert, wenn man völlig fremde Menschen auf der Straße zusammenbringt und sie dazu bringt, miteinander zu reden? Wir haben nur eine einzige Frage an jeden hier. Was brauchst du? Ja, also, vielleicht ist das ja hier mal der richtige Ort, um das so zu versuchen. Ich brauche jemand, der mich hilft, mein Zeugnis zu übersetzen in Deutsch. Wir haben mit ein paar Kommilitonen ein Computerspiel programmiert, aber wir haben einfach keine Designer gefunden. Was mir eigentlich wirklich fehlt, ist gerade ein Plan, was ich wirklich in meinem Leben machen möchte. Ich habe halt die ganzen letzten acht Wochen so viel gearbeitet, dass ich fast gar nicht zum Schlafen gekommen bin. Ich muss immer abrufbar sein und äh, merke, dass mein Körper langsam aufgibt sozusagen. Ich habe einen super Job, es läuft richtig gut, aber alle meine Freundinnen heiraten gerade und die kriegen alle Kinder und ich merke, dass ich mich gerade echt frage, ob ich, ob ich einfach was ganz Wichtiges verpasst habe. Also vielleicht gibt es ja andere Frauen hier, denen es genauso geht, die auch keine Kinder haben oder ja, <lacht> und trotzdem vielleicht glücklich sind oder ich wünsche mir Frauen, mit denen ich mich mal darüber austauschen kann, ob es denen genauso geht. Das, was ich gerade wirklich brauche, ist einfach nur eine Gehaltserhöhung. Also, <lacht> vielleicht kann mir da irgendwann viel helfen oder kennt jemanden, der jemanden kennt, der ja. ja, also wenn du es nicht zu morgen brauchst, kannst du überlegen, ob du vielleicht zur Architektur switcht. Mir hat Meditation sehr geholfen. Wir suchen immer noch Leute für die Hotelfachmann Ausbildung. Und ich bin eher so der kreative Typ. Ich bin Raphael. Moin. Gib mir mal deine Nummer. Also wir suchen immer. Meine Mutter ist Deutschlehrerin, die kann dir bestimmt helfen. Das Ergebnis? Drei Jobangebote, neue Kontakte. Ehrlicher Austausch und eine ganz besondere Erkenntnis. Egal, was du brauchst, es gibt immer jemanden, der dich unterstützen kann. LinkedIn. Gemeinsam ist das neue Ich. Was brauchst du? Well, again, welcome to everyone. I can see a few more people have arrived. Uh, welcome from whichever location you are in the world. Uh, I believe there's lots of people from different locations, so feel free to pop the details in the chat. Also, if you would like to mention what you're changing from, so from which career to which career, I'd love to get some comments and make this as interactive as possible. Makes it much more interesting than just um, my slides, so I can make it more relevant to you, the audience. So uh, I'd love to see lots of action in the chat. Also, I will be going at the end with general questions. And if you do have a question on the way through, again, I'll be keeping my eye on the chat and watching out for that as well. We've got Kate from Toowoomba. Welcome uh, in Queensland, Australia. And also, if you don't already, please put the LinkedIn app on your phone. I'm going to show you a little technique. So um, if you don't already have the LinkedIn app on your phone, I really encourage you to put it on so that you can connect with people from now on. So Paddington in Sydney, welcome Kit. Uh, top 10 techniques for career changes is what I'm going through as well as 10 ways to use LinkedIn for career changes and also how you can manage your LinkedIn activity in 20 minutes per week. Uh, so that's the, gonna be the focus. Um, Jan's changing roles after 17 years. Wow, uh, I was in banking for 11 years and it was a huge shock to the system when I came out into the real world. I used to think the bank would always improve things. Uh, but then when I got out to the real world, I realized it was worse, which was kind of bizarre. Uh, I think it was possibly because back in the day, 
uh, the bank had a lot of advisors working for them. So we were actually quite leading edge in many respects. So it was a really great start to my career to be in that corporate environment. Uh, Rita is going from nine to five employment to a gig worker. Well, I haven't had a real job since 1994. Can you believe it? And I, look, it's not for the faint hearted. I'm warning you now. I was speaking to an IT recruiter this week. He mentioned that a lot of IT roles are moving from contract to permanent because people want people to stay now, which is really interesting in the banking and finance sector. So that's a bit of a trend. And an article that I've popped in the chat already today is about um, HR departments needing to get used to the idea of people having sideways careers. So feel free to check out that link as well, because I think that's a really interesting phenomenon. As I said, I haven't had a normal job. I was quoted in the Daily Mail, the article's going up later today. She said, which title do I quote you by, Sue? You seem to wear so many hats. Uh, and that's definitely true. And I love it. I love the variety. It gives me huge energy. And uh, I, it's just fantastic. I, I love it. But it's not for everyone. Uh, so if you do want to know more about that lifestyle, I uh, definitely recommend that you read my book, Geeksters, uh, which is available for free from researchgate.net. So if you're interested in understanding how my life looks and how it's worked, uh, please read Geeksters. Um, it's free of charge via that ResearchGate link. And it's my gift to you for showing up. Um, you can also download my first book, which was all about LinkedIn and very strategic. The second book, Attract the Right Career or Business, is more story focused and the third one marketing your business hyper locally is case study based so i'll just have another quick look in the chat here uh not changing careers but using linkedin to grow your business okay well there'll be heaps of tips on that also what i'd suggest leanne is that you check out the other linkedin insight webinars because there's other ones for business and our next one in November is going to be LinkedIn for salespeople. So there'll be lots of sales tips in that. Uh, from Jaja Warungland, thank you. Arts Muso teacher moving into community services and financial counseling. I met a financial counselor, he was amazing. He said that if you're getting into difficulties, you should go and see a social worker because they can implement change for you. Whereas a psychologist will just talk to you about your problems. Now I'm not discounting the value of psychologists, but I thought his advice was really fantastic. So, um, and music, wow, isn't that a fabulous skill to have? Uh, so thank you for sharing that. From Wellington, New Zealand, we've got Paul. Welcome, Paul. Interested in this from the perspective of clients changing careers. Yes, it can be really interesting working with people who are changing their careers. There was an American woman that I met who'd moved to Melbourne. She got married to an Australian and had two young children. And she had worked in New York in PR. I mean, that is high flying. And she got to Melbourne and thought, hmm, this is beautiful, but it's kind of boring. Uh, and it was really interesting to work, help her understand what her options were. And so I explored with her the idea of, well, is this something you've always wanted to do? And she said, look, I love art and graphic design. And I just planted the seed. I didn't tell her what to do. Uh, and what she ended up doing was finding a graphic design course and she started that and she met a whole bunch of like-minded people and that was the spark she needed to stay in Australia um, and also to develop her skills and you know she was kind of happy to choose to live here because she knew that growing up with her young children in Australia would be different to growing up in the US so so that was a really interesting story. Kate's uh, IT professionals in the Australian government have moved to contractors. Ah that's interesting yes because I, I think Another reason IT contractors can do this is A, they can command a high salary and B, their skills are so much in demand and people need them because they don't have those IT skills. So I think they're really well placed. I think the employees are determining the market now. Um, and you also develop LinkedIn profiles for clients and job seekers. Yes, well, you'll get plenty of tips on that as well. Please also, Kate, if you haven't already watched the one I did, the very first one in October last year, on LinkedIn for career specialists and business coaches. I think you'll find that one helpful. Elizabeth is in Sydney, changing from research manager to a change manager. Wow, and Deb McDonald referred you. Thank you, that's fantastic that you could make it. Welcome, uh, and change manager. Uh, there's an IT cybersecurity gun who said that he had to do a lot of change 
And he said the main thing that he had to do with people was adjust the culture. It wasn't actually about the IT solutions. So uh, keep that in mind in your new role, Deb. Uh, Joe's from Perth, relocating to Melbourne. Woohoo! Welcome to Melbourne. Uh, let us know when you get here. And looking to move from HR permanent role to environment, climate change, the not for profit or purpose organisations, and working on developing your own skills. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I have done a lot of work for not for profit organisations at the community level and at the more senior advocacy level. And there are some really great champions out there. However, I have also discovered in those environments that they're not always up to date. And it can be very challenging to go from an environment where you've been corporate, getting things done, to not for profit, and they're all about passion. And the systems and processes are not always in place. So, Joe, those management skills will come in particularly helpful uh, when you do that. And uh, yeah look forward to the change. Frank from North Sydney played various roles in software development, ranging from developer, tester, support, engineer. my goodness, that's a lot, uh, for more than 15 organisations in the past 17 years. Uh, and you've read my book, LinkedIn. Oh, insightful, informative. Oh, good on you, Frank. Thank you, thank you. I get excited when I hear that people read my book. You know what's going to happen now, Frank? <laughs> now that you've heard me speak, if you reread anything, you're going to hear my voice talking to you from the pages of the book. This is what people tell me. And my first book was such a fabulous exercise because I was brain dumping so many things that I'd learned. And then I got three different editors to go through my book and Surreya will relate to this. And what ended up happening was they kept changing my voice the way I write. And I thought, that's it. I don't care if I've got spelling mistakes. I want it to be all my voice. So let me assure you, if there's a typo in there, it's my fault and I'm fine with that because I've read very, you know, lots of books over the years and I found even in highly edited books, there's still mistakes. So I'd rather it be 110% my own voice uh, rather than anyone else's. But I did try three different editors. So there you go. Um, and if you want to put in what was most helpful from the book in the chat, I'm sure that uh, the other people would love to hear that. And, um, and if there's a way you can say thank you for today, uh, I'd love you to support me as well. So as I said in the chat, if at any time you want to save the chat, you can just press the three dots and you can save it. And I'll put in um, these links again for my social profiles. I've managed to get to 100 YouTube subscribers. Woohoo, I'm excited about that. And uh, there's the LinkedIn experiment video where you'll see the slides later today, the Sideways Careers article and my social profiles. Sally moved from New South Wales government to federal government as uh, doing stakeholder engagement in the vet sector. Wow, we certainly need people to be vocationally trained. And one of the things I love about teaching is I'm a practitioner as well. And that means I bring across the knowledge that I've picked up as a practitioner into my teaching, which keeps things nice and fresh and current. So uh, thanks, Joe, for the tips. Yes. Uh, you yeah, just just get ready, Joe. Look, it's really important work, but you have to lay seeds. And because there are people are there for passion, it just takes a little bit longer sometimes for the change to occur. When you look backwards, you'll see what's happened. But as you're going through it, it can be pretty murky. Uh, Lee from Melbourne, pivot from an academic career to opening my coaching business. How exciting. One of my students at the Centre for Adult Education, she was leaving a major university here in Melbourne. And this is a really important story to tell. And she decided that she would edit PhD papers going forward. And I suggested, well, why are you doing a WordPress course? Because her website wasn't even built in WordPress. But does anybody want to have a guess at how much she paid for her very first website? And it's five figures, would you believe? This is a brochure style website. Anybody got a guess? Want to pop it in the chat? And by the way, she had not got any business out of it. 15,000. Well, you're not far off. 20,000 Australian dollars. I could not believe that she had spent that much money on her website. Now, all she actually needed to get started in business, believe it or not, was a LinkedIn profile. Because I know, or oh, I've met people who are studying a PhD 
and all of them tell everyone that they're studying a PhD and they usually mention it on their LinkedIn profiles. So all she had to do was update her LinkedIn profile and then connect with people that she found on LinkedIn who said they were studying a PhD. Then they would have seen her profile and seen that she edits and then at some point in time they probably would have come to her so she didn't actually need a website at all now what i would suggest to you now if you're starting out your own business you might as well get a free google website as well there's a link to that in the notes um, but you don't actually need a website now obviously when you get one it's great and if you do want to have one i suggest you normally start off with your own name uh, so i've got suealson.com and mind you, I mean, I've been online since 2001 and I only created that website in 2012, uh, but it's been up there for 10 years now. And uh, it definitely helps because people are going to Google you and we're gonna talk more about that as well. Anyway, I better get to the slides because we've got a lot to get through. Thank you for giving me those bits and pieces. Just to give you a tiny bit of background, I started my career at Westpac in Adelaide six days after my last year 12 exam. And I worked there full time for 11 years whilst I also studied part time. When I moved from Adelaide to Melbourne, I found the transition difficult and I also got sacked when I was pregnant. And uh, basically, I haven't had a real job since. I've just done a whole bunch of things. I launched Newcomers Network in 2001 and it's still there. Camberwell Network in 2012, which is wrapping up in November. And I'm a member of multiple professional associations. If any of you are authors or interested in being an author, I'm running an event on Friday to help you increase your Google profile uh, through the Australian Society of Authors, if you'd like to check that one out. Oh, Frank's mentioned sometimes since you read it, you started implementing the tips that is the perfect way to use that book, Frank. You sort of turn the page, type, 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 turn the page, type, type, type. That's exactly how it's designed to be. So well, well done. Uh, Denny's writing a book. Yes, please come to that event on Friday. asauthors.org uh, and uh, you too can join it. Okay, so quick points. I'd definitely like to acknowledge the traditional owners of all the lands on which we meet. Whoops, sorry, gone too quick. And... Uh, this presentation is for people of all backgrounds, all cultures. It is not professional advice for your personal circumstances, though. Uh, it's general advice. So feel free to use what works and discard the rest. The slides and video recording will be sent and you are welcome to share that with whoever you like. You can leave your video camera off if you feel so inclined. You can also leave it on. I don't mind. Um, and your microphone on mute while I'm speaking. But as I said, we'll definitely get to questions at the end. Uh, and I'm going to be keeping an eye on the chat as well. I am assuming that there is a varied level of knowledge and experience here. And I do write comprehensive slides. So I know they don't follow the rules of training and development, but I like to see text. <laughs> and I like it's, it's a good memory recall for me. So that's why uh, the text is in the screen so that you can see it. And it's designed again so that after the presentation, if you want to go through these things, you can click on the links and do it for you. I will be asking you what's been most helpful to you at the end. That's great feedback for me as I'm always looking to improve. And if you'd like to say thank you, and if we're connected on LinkedIn, you can provide an endorsement for LinkedIn training, or you can write a recommendation, you can write a Google review, you can follow me on my socials, which I get excited about even donate to a charity just to say thanks you know I think it was worthwhile and I'd like to give to my favorite charity today so uh, it's for career changes that's what we're going to be focusing on and when after the presentation you'll be able to click on these links there's a workshop I'm doing here in Melbourne I'm going to be spending four hours and we're actually going to go through some stuff uh, for people who are over 40 who are thinking about changing their careers this article is how to choose your next job or career. So how did I become a career development practitioner? Well, let me tell you, I spent three years reading books, do what you love, the money will follow, find your purpose in life, what colours your parachute. And after all that time, I couldn't believe it. I still didn't have an understanding of what I should do with my life. <laughs> so this article is a little mind map exercise where you start off with your non-negotiables you brain dump everything else, and then you come back to it 24 hours later, circle the things that are most important. And what it does is it gives you a values-based decision-making framework because so many of us have so many ways to choose what we're going to do in our lives. 
I mean, it's probably a little bit late for me to be a brain surgeon, but I could still be a rocket scientist. So, you know, these are the amazing things that we have about life now. Uh, we can choose what we do next. So if you're having difficulty choosing, then I suggest that article. I also wrote a much shorter one recently for Tudor's Field, and it talks about your values, both what you believe and the value you can provide your strengths so the ones you already have plus the ones you've acquired and I explain this by saying I'm really good at accounting but boy do I hate it and then the um, strengths values context so if you're in a situation as I was several years ago where I had no access to childcare after hours or on school holidays I literally could not get a full-time job because I didn't have access to that so that meant my context meant that I had to choose work that would fit in and around the needs of my children so these are three things that apart from choosing what you want to do you also need to make sure that um, yeah it fits your values strengths and context uh, this article goes into more detail about understanding what your context is there was a guy who was a musician who worked at McDonald's. Now, most of us would not want to work at McDonald's, but for him to be a musician and work the hours that would support that, that's what he chose to do. Also, I have lost work. And obviously I got sacked when I was pregnant. And at the time I was angry, but it has put me on the journey that has been so great for me. So I do believe unemployment can be good for you. So that's another piece there. Uh, other ones that I've got in here, I was on national television recently talking about mature age workers. That particular article, what I've done is I've provided all the details I sent to the producers before the program went to air. So there's a lot of extra links on resources available if you are mature age uh, that are available for free. Then there's also a tough love for people who are unemployed. If you click on that link, and you're over 30, there's a 30 to 50 year old one and a 50 and over. So you can check that one out. I also believe that if you are changing your careers, you're probably going to have to adopt multiple job search strategies. So that's that one. And perhaps you came here thinking, I'm trying to get my best friend, partner, lover, whatever, to change their careers because I know they hate their job. But how do I help them? Because you know, they've not been listening. So there's that one. And then LinkedIn for women. And then obviously the previous webinars and today's will be there. Uh, Frank's mentioned one's core values and doing something aligned to is, yes, valuable meaning. Absolutely. Uh, we really need to be aligned to our values. And I think if COVID's taught us something, it's, you know, we have to be values aligned now. We just, you know, find it too difficult not to be. So, here are some specific tips related to LinkedIn that I believe are really important. So from now on, I want you to connect with everyone you meet on LinkedIn, personally or professionally. And at the end, I'll uh, go through a little thing on your LinkedIn app. So if you haven't got the LinkedIn app on your phone now, please pop it in. Now, the, the th four things that people are going to look at when they're assessing your LinkedIn profile. Now, you could be going from two completely unrelated occupations. They're going to look at your photo, make sure that matches. They're going to look at your headline directly underneath your name. They're going to look at your current job title. And they're also going to look um, at that, you know, in that summary. Um, there's only three, sorry, photo, headline and summary. Um, oh, sorry. And the other one is your current position. So, if you're not in that new job already, what you can do is you can say career research. And so, so for this other, uh, Joe was saying about being in not-for-profit, career research, not-for-profit management. And that can be listed as a role, even though you're not in it yet. Just say when you started looking until now. So what the algorithm does is it believes that you are working now. So you're trying to trick it into saying, well, it's better to get somebody to go from a job into a new job than it is to, to start from zero base. So if you've got those four things, then you can change into whatever you like. And I'm also going to be showing you some other words you can use as part of that process as well.
Now, I started my career at Westpac in 1982. And if anybody wants to know, I'm 57 and proud of it. Uh, and I started training in 1987. But because that is mentioned in my job that started in 1982, the algorithm believes I've been training since 1987. So there's another way you can sort of trick the algorithm. So anytime you can think of a word that is related to the career you'd like to be in, and you can include it in any of your past roles, uh, then the algorithm says, well, uh, she was training in 1982, uh, she was training in 1994, she was training in 19, you know, 2022, therefore she must be a trainer. So that can help you as well. How does the algorithm work if you're working in two areas? I work for school, but I also do my own freelance stuff. Um, look, Claire, I can't tell you exactly how the algorithm works. The way I see the algorithm is what I've observed by practice and research and lots of other people's comments. I'm in a, a LinkedIn experts group, for a couple of those with 50 people in each group. And we, we share tips and tricks that we've found. So I would suggest that the one that is listed first on your LinkedIn profile is the one that should be what you're trying to attract through LinkedIn. So if you want to attract more school stuff, put that first. If you want to attract more freelance stuff, put that first. Uh, so that would be my suggestion. Okay. Um, all experience, both paid and unpaid, is worth adding to your LinkedIn profile. So let's say you manage to get some voluntary work, but it's related to your area of expertise pop it in the professional experience section as well as the voluntary if you wish. So that way people can see you've got current professional experience in that role. Oh, sorry, Kate, those groups are message groups. They're not LinkedIn groups. Uh, LinkedIn groups used to be fabulous back in the early days, but when the news feed came in, the value of groups changed. So um, if you want to message me, I'll see if there's, because we can only have 50 people in the group, I'll see if I can add you in if there's a spot. Um, so, so just message me afterwards. Now, the other thing is uh, LinkedIn is one big database, just as the Google search engine is one big database. And if you don't write down that information, you cannot be found. So if I meet you at a networking event and we sort of get on, I'm going to make lots of assumptions about you and just automatically say, yep, you're right for me. But when I'm looking at a LinkedIn profile, I can only see what's on the screen. So if you said, oh, I don't want to put too much detail on there, well, then I'm not going to know your story. So you kind of got to tell the story and as much of that detail as possible. And I also know that a lot of career changers are very anxious because they don't have any experience. Now, I recommend the three best ways for anybody who's got any level of disadvantage to get work is through networking, referrals and voluntary work. So I don't mean working for 60 hours a week for free. I do not mean that. But if you've got just even, you know, three days experience of something that's better than nothing and your study is important as well and you don't have to be a hundred percent good at something before you can start applying for those roles in fact i would suggest that if you've got 60 percent competency in anything you can give it a red hot go because even if you had a hundred percent competency from today it would still take you six months in a new role to be unconsciously competent so please Put yourself out there. You, you don't know if you don't ask. And if I think back to the 18-year-old person who joined Westpac, I think, oh, my goodness, that poor young baby. She didn't know anything. But at 26, I was, you know, in charge of an entire branch. So who would have thought that would have happened in eight years? So, yeah, there's plenty of options. Um, you, yes, Julia, you can put voluntary work as a job in the professional section called experience or in the voluntary or in both. So when I had a senior leadership role in the Australian Human Resources Institute, no, I was not paid for it, but I was working with a lot of HR professionals at the time. So I put it in my formal experience. Uh, now that I'm not working with HR professionals all the time, I've just left it in my voluntary position. So the good thing about LinkedIn is there's version 1.0, 1.6, 2.3, 9.10, you know, I think I must be on version 264.29 by now, but uh, yeah, you can change it. So, so that's fine. Just save a copy before you do. Uh, try to get a super comment by your networks. 
Yes, Elizabeth, that's a fantastic suggestion. If you can get a secondment into an area uh, or somebody gives you a go, you know, that is fantastic. Um, and yeah, there's, there's lots of ways to find work, heaps of that content on my website. So why even bother with LinkedIn? Well, you're gonna be Googled by recruiters, decision makers, people you meet at parties, uh, you know, long lost family members, people who, you know, if something happens to you suddenly and there's a funeral, they'll be checking you out on LinkedIn. Uh, all sorts of people will be visiting your LinkedIn profile. So you definitely need to change your URL and I'll be mentioning that again. Um, if you do have your own website, uh, that's also going to be helpful. The reason I like people having their own website is they can put whatever they want on it, whereas on LinkedIn, you kind of got to fill in boxes, which is not quite the same thing. So if you're going to start with a website, start with one just in your own name. And why else? There's 850 million members worldwide. I was working with an author recently who wants to sell more books. And when she saw that many people on the network, she thought that was a pretty good way to, to reach people. And over 17 million in Australia, when you consider there's only 26 million total in Australia, that's pretty exciting. And the other interesting statistic, I thought it was only old people like me on LinkedIn, but it turns out that 59% are what you know, would classify in the younger category, of under 34, you know, between 25 and 34. So there's a lot of people who are really interested in their careers out there on LinkedIn and also decision makers who could be looking for someone with your experience. And networks, that is what has saved me throughout my entire non-professional job <laughs> life, uh, my work life rather than my job life. And I really encourage you to think that, you know, a network is what's always going to give you those opportunities, whereas a job can, can end at any time and the income can end at any time too. So what are my top 10 techniques for career changes? You might like to, if you've already got some experience with LinkedIn, tick off the ones that you're already doing. And if you're not doing these things, add them to your repertoire. So again, I can't emphasize this enough. Connect with everyone you meet online or offline. So even if someone messages you, connect with them. Um, anyone who messages you via email, text message, phone call, everybody I meet, I try and connect with. And I remember back in the days before we had databases and I had an, a paper address book. And every time somebody changed their phone number or their address, I had to manually update it. The beauty of connecting with LinkedIn is they can change countries, they can change emails, they can change phones, and I can still reach them. So this is why it's really, really important. You don't have to connect with everybody, though. You can have up to 30,000 connections. Uh, my policy is if they're in Australia, they've got a photo, a reasonable number of connections, and they look, don't look like they're going to sell me multi-level marketing products, then I'll, I'll say yes. Uh, but if they're from foreign countries and not in a field related to what I do, um, I'm a little more reluctant to connect with them. You can connect with people. You can follow company pages. So if you're moving into those new sectors, follow the company pages of the, the organisations where you'd like to work. And you can find heaps of people by doing searches on Google. Now, a Google advanced search, and I will quickly show you this because it's so important. Uh, to see if I can escape from here first. A Google advanced search. Um, when you do your own search on LinkedIn, you can only find what you can find based on who you're connected to. But if I was using a Google advanced search, uh, whoops, sorry, I clicked the wrong one then, that one, um, I can search the entire LinkedIn database. So if I was looking for an artist and, oh, and maybe also in Melbourne, so you just use the Boolean search queries. So you put things in quotation marks. So I want somebody who's called an artist and who's got the word Melbourne on their LinkedIn profile. So I just go linkedin.com and then I choose search and I can do as many of these searches. So here's Dion, Emily, uh, and I can just keep going and going and going through all these people and find as many people as I want. And then, you know, if I'm starting out a new career, I can find the people that I wouldn't even know existed there. Um, James mentioned you'd like to start a side hustle writing. No, 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 do not create a separate LinkedIn profile. Absolutely not, Jan. 
Uh, for now, you are one person and one person only. So you can decide how you would like to use LinkedIn. Is it mostly to get writing gigs or is it mostly for branding what your current role is? Now, if your current role is nice and secure, you can still mention all that. That can all still be there. But you can put the focus on your writing as the main goal you're trying to achieve. And it's interesting you should ask that question because I set up Camberwell Network in 2012 and in November I'm wrapping it up after just over 10 years and because I want to focus on my writing career. So I'm gradually incorporating more writing content into my LinkedIn profile and you'll see the message changed. Uh, LinkedIn strongly discourages having more than one profile. LinkedIn also strongly discourages you from um, creating a false profile. Now, there is one exception this. Vicky loves my poetry. Thank you, Vicky. Lovely to see you. <laughs> okay. So, yes, and poetry is another thing that I, I do as well. So, there is one situation where I can recommend you have a second LinkedIn profile. So, I was out dating and I met this guy who was an erotic fiction writer and he worked for the Victorian government. And uh, I asked him one time, oh, do you ever get the two writings confused? And he just looked silly at me. My daughter thought that joke was hilarious. Uh, but anyway, he, because he wrote for the government, he couldn't write under his own name erotic fiction because that doesn't look good for the government. So he actually had a pseudonym that he used for a second LinkedIn profile. So all of his information about his erotic fiction was on one profile and all of his information about his professional career as a writer and policy advisor and so on and so forth was in his real name uh, so that's the only time I would recommend uh, you know two LinkedIn profiles but otherwise absolutely not because what can accidentally happen is people will connect to the wrong you you know they might connect to your writing one instead of your work one and you know then all of a sudden you've mixed up people and it's just a disaster so yeah please do not do that uh not recommended at all you only need one LinkedIn profile you've just got to choose uh which components you would like to focus on and and make sort of the main message of your profile whoops sorry um we'll go back okay so I've got lots of Zoom things all over my screen, so it's making it a bit harder for me to see my slides. So the first thing is to complete your LinkedIn profile in detail. We don't have time to go through that today, but it is important. But before you do, I do suggest that you download a copy of your LinkedIn profile, because if you change it, you can't go back and say, oh, I want to see what I wrote last time. So you do need to save it to PDF via the more button and also get a copy of your data via that link. You would also need to make sure that your headline has all your keywords that you want to be found for. And I've got a LinkedIn headline formula that I recommend, which starts off with your title, your keywords, and then something about you personally. Other LinkedIn trainers recommend other ways to do it. So all of us have our reasons. My reason is to search engine optimize you and to get you in more search results. That's, that's what's happening with me. You do need to describe your achievements. Now, for many Australians, this can be very uncomfortable. I don't want to brag. I don't want to boast. I, you know, people will think I'm silly if I talk about that. No. If you say you did X, you did Y, you did Z, there's nothing boastful about that. If you said you were the best at X and you were the fabulousness of Y, you know, and the awesomeness of Z, then I say, yes, that's probably a bit over the top. So just leave out the object adjectives, but make sure you describe your achievements because they are important. And let me assure you in 10 years time, you will have forgotten about them. So it's a good idea to write them down now. Look at your skills and put the most important ones in the top three. So you might've been working in government now, and now you want to move into something else. So you don't want your government skills top. You want those new skills uh, top and, and votes for. Fill in as many sections as possible. Now, the other thing you can do, I was working with a young gentleman who had done his studies and got a job in an accounting firm. Unfortunately, he lost the job, but he still wanted to work in accounting. And his dad booked an appointment for him. He was such a nice dad. And anyway, I suggested that he call himself a future accountant. 
uh, which meant that he would come up in accountant search queries. And he did, and he got a new job, and it all worked out fabulously, because the other thing that I did on his profile is I made it really clear the type of person he was, so that the next organisation that accepted him would understand his unique attribute attributes because he wasn't a typical type of person. So we really wanted to make sure that the next organization was a good fit uh, for this young man. Uh, Julia says, LinkedIn for Creatives by Sue was fantastic for tips on having creative side hustles. Thank you, Julia. That's a good point to remember. That was one of my other webinars that I did. And uh, I really enjoyed that one. Oh my goodness, because I just admire creatives so much. The fact that they put their, their heart and soul into their work and every time they do, they're being judged, I think is incredibly courageous. So, and there's not enough creatives on LinkedIn. So I would love to see more poetry, more art, more sculpture, more everything art on LinkedIn. I would just love to see it. Um, so please don't be embarrassed about putting your work out there. I originally was uncomfortable putting my poetry out there because I thought people would get confused by it. And I would only put it on my Sue Elson company page on LinkedIn, but now I've put it on my personal profile. I want to be associated with my poetry because my poetry is designed to help people reflect and, and realise that, you know, things are mostly okay, uh, but it's okay to acknowledge that it's kind of tough at the moment. So um, yeah, I've decided I'm going to go all in. And uh, yeah, it takes, takes a bit of time and age, I think, to go all in, but definitely worth it. Now, the key words, if you're going to talk about your side hustle or this future career or where you want to be next, if you can put those keywords in your headline, in your current job title, in any past job titles, and throughout as many other sections as possible, including education. So let's say you just did a little quick short course and you put that in your education and it's related to that area that you want to move into, then LinkedIn says, well, you're educated in that topic. So that's a good thing. And that's going to help your profile as well. And of course, don't forget to ask for recommendations. So I suggest everybody customize their LinkedIn URL. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, please watch one of the previous webinars. I've done it heaps of times. Just visit your LinkedIn profile on the top right hand side. There's a little uh, thing to edit your URL, change it to your name. This optimizes you in Google search results because 75% of people will be Googled before a job interview and 95% before you get a job offer. So you need to come up in Google search results. Now, this is the headline formula. And I changed mine recently because I'm changing my keywords around and I'm putting author, you know, closer and closer to the front. Uh, so um, your photo needs to be head and shoulders. You can see here I'm wearing a high neck garment to try and frame my face. It could even be a little bit higher. I've now noticed this is a photo that I took very recently after I was on television. My neck size is about the same size as my forehead size. So it sort of puts my eyes you know, in that one third space because the eyes need to be on the one third line of the circle and smiling with your teeth showing, neutral background, all of those sorts of things. Uh, so that, and, and try and make the photo look as how somebody in that career you'd like to go into would look. So say you wanted to be an occupational health and safety manager on a building site, you are wearing a hard hat, goggles and a high vis vest. I'd say, right, that person looks like they're ready for that job. Um, Kate's mentioned the about section is another key place for keywords. Absolutely it is, uh, but not as many people click on the see more. So we're not always going to be able to wait for people to get to that section to see those words. So yes, I definitely recommend putting it in there uh, and great tip there, Kate. So uh, here's my formula, uh, your label. So I've said here aspiring artist and painter, and then my keywords could be contemporary impressionism, commissions, anything that I think people would put into a LinkedIn or Google search. And then last time I put in foodie and a little uh, emoji. Now I put in emojis to give a little bit more color and flavor to the LinkedIn profile. However, I only put them at the end because if somebody is using assistive technology because they can't see or hear or there's some other difficulty they have, the emoji just looks like a whole bunch of hieroglyphics and it doesn't show properly 
for somebody using assistive technology. So anytime I use an emoji, um, it's sparingly because I don't want it to interfere with communicating the message. And I've just put, you know, I don't know whether that smiley face looks like he's sticking his tongue out or he's licking his lips, but, you know, that was just an emoji I chose uh, for that one. Now, on the mobile phone app, you can add a video on your face for 30 seconds, a 10 second audio pronunciation where you can also mention, you know, Sue Elson, I'm an independent LinkedIn specialist, blah, blah, blah. And you can also add a feature link. And you can only do these three things on the mobile phone app. So I really encourage you to do those. And of course, if you fill in this open to section, you've got an open to work section you can fill in and you've got a providing services section you can fill in. So you need to fill in both of these, not just one of them. And if you fill in the providing services option, you can actually add some media in there. So you can add pictures of your artwork or, you know, examples of projects you've been on and photos from it, you know, provided it's not commercially sensitive, um, but you can really showcase it. So that way you can be found by recruiters who are looking for an employee, but you can also be found by organisations looking for someone with your services. So that could be very helpful as well. So the next one is to join and or follow professional associations. So let's say you're studying at the moment. Uh, it is a really good idea to look up the professional association associated with that industry and join it whilst you are a student. Uh, so when I was working with the Australian Human Resources Institute, student membership was only $30 a year. Uh, so it's much more affordable to join as a student than it is as a full blown member, uh, but you still get the benefits. There might be mentoring available through the professional association for free. You can put post nominals after your name if you are a professional member. If you don't know what the associations are, you can go to myfuture.edu.au and find them out. Uh, Julie's asked, so when recording your name, did you use a professional voice, a natural voice? How did you decide tone? Well, again, Julia, you've got to think about your audience. Who are you trying to reach? So if you're trying to reach CEOs and board members, well, you'd probably be a little bit more professional. Or maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you'd say, look, this is who I am and this is how I want to be perceived. So whatever is right for you and what you're trying to achieve. I listen to my voice a lot, obviously, because I do so many presentations. And I went to a voice coach to find out if I sounded like a school teacher, because that's how it feels to me. And he said no. So I thought, oh, thank goodness for that. So just be aware that you are probably going to be the most critical of your voice. So why don't you record two or three versions and ask two or three friends what they think and help them, you know, to, to do it. But yes, a short sound bite uh, is good. 10 seconds. I looked at a guy's video the other day and he was uh, doing a, a bomb, you know, like when you jump off of a cliff and into the, the ocean. What do you call that? I don't know. Just, I don't, I, they used to call them bombs. You know, you just jump off and boom into the water. And that was his intro video. So he was in marketing. I thought, oh, gee whiz, I don't think that that's really relevant. But, you know, each to their own. And if somebody liked him doing a water bomb, then, yeah, that, that would be a good fit. Uh, for him and that organisation. It's a bit too wild for me. So the next thing is, after you've filled in your profile and worked out, you know, what your message is, is it's time to start engaging with content online. So everybody likes the nice auntie or uncle who likes their post and comments on it. And in fact, you can be more popular on LinkedIn because you engage with other people's content than by actually putting your own content out. And the algorithm also likes it because it says that this is somebody who is engaging on the platform and they're not just, they're listening, they're not just talking. So getting that engagement piece up is really important. There's, there's two people who are looking at my posts on LinkedIn all the time and they write a lengthy comment on every one of my posts. And I think they do it because they know my posts get, you know, reasonable coverage and it's a way to promote themselves. So it's, it's kind of a sneaky way to get your name out there. 
There was also another client I had who had an arts background and she'd been a singer, a musician. She'd done amazing, amazing stuff. But she wanted a real job because she wanted to buy a house and settle down and all those sort of normal things. And so she got a job in a university. And of course, there's lots of rules and regulations about what she could or could not post. But they gave her permission to share content through her newsfeed. And would you believe it? She got job offers. She got her contract extended. All sorts of things happened simply because she started putting out content related to her new role in this university. It was fantastic. And so she managed it really, really well. You don't have to write all the content. You can curate, which means you find it from somewhere and then share it. That's just as good because it shows that you're on top of you know, the latest news. And then once you're ready, you can start creating your own content. Don't worry about spelling mistakes or saying everybody else has already written about this. The reality is your version is going to be slightly different to everybody else's. And that's what we want to see. We don't want to see, like there's heaps of LinkedIn trainers out there. And the good news is most of us support one another and we encourage each other and we even recommend others uh, if their specialty is. AJ Wilcox is great for ads. Michelle J. Raymond is good for company pages. You know, there's lots of specialists out there uh, and it's, it's good to be friendly. Now, as you can see here, when you click on start a post, this little screen will come up and you'll get three dots. And then you've got all these choices as to what you can pop in the news feed. So don't think you've only got these first four choices. You've actually got quite a lot of choices of things that you can do. And that link there goes into more detail. Now, back in the day, a lot of LinkedIn trainers did not recommend that you create a company page. But I have always recommended creating a company page because as a freelancer or gigster, I need to say who I work for. So if I have a company page, I can say I work for myself and then my little Sue Elson logo is going to appear there. And as you can see, I've got over 500 followers, even though I'm an employee of one. And it also means every time I post on my personal profile, I also post on my company profile. So it means that if somebody wants to see all the stuff I've done recently, they can just visit my company profile and see all that stuff there. So it's really helpful for that. You can also see I've got this little lead generation form on here and I can make that say what I want it to say. So that can be a source of leads. And um, you know that's also really, really helpful. And then there's other ways. If you've got a business name, you can maximize that as well. And if you create a really good going concern, then you can maybe sell it along with your LinkedIn company page at a later date. Now, there's lots of settings you can adjust. If you want to go out stalking other people for research purposes, you can look at them anonymously by changing your profile viewing options. Um, you can turn off autoplay videos. You can decide who can see who you're connected to. There's lots of different settings, but there's also something called LinkedIn creator mode. And if you turn that on, you nominate five hashtags of people to talk to or your know, topics to talk to. And then um, that content can go more viral. So if you want to learn more about that, check out that one. Uh, Elizabeth mentioned in a few posts in the past months on what you learned studying change management. Not of views or likes, but it's good to get myself out there. Yes, Elizabeth. And it also means that when somebody looks at your LinkedIn profile, they can see what you've been talking about recently. So you're not quiet and nothing happening. You're showing that you have those digital skills as well. So don't ever worry about the level of engagement. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. I had one client and in 24 hours, we got 4,000 views on his post. And he says, oh, Sue, can you do that again? And I said, well, what happened? He says, oh, well, somebody at Coles saw it and then it went all through Coles and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, sadly, unless all of those things all happen again all at the same time, then I can't guarantee you 4,000 views on your next post. One might get 4,000, one might get 400, but it's all good. Um, it's just consistency is far more important uh, than vanity. Now, there's lots of statistics that I recommend that you keep. If you go to my latest offer page on my website, you can download this spreadsheet. I collect these statistics every so often to see how I have grown. They are real-time statistics, so you can't go back and say, what was it on the 12th of October? 
unless you've written it down. So if you'd like to keep some stats and you change your LinkedIn profile, you'll be able to come back and see what your stats were before and you can see how your LinkedIn profile has improved and what results it has generated. So how can you use LinkedIn as a career changer? Well, definitely increase your engagement ratio. There is a new reaction button called the, the smiley face, uh, which is meant to say this was funny. So let's hope more funny content comes onto LinkedIn as well. And also do, you can choose how you respond. So do you respond as a person? Do you respond as a company? Uh, you've also got that choice as well. And if you are not a salesperson, and I'm not a salesperson, I like to attract opportunities and let people self-select. That's, that's my goal. But if you want to find warm leads, people who would be interested in what you have to offer, there's lots of places to find them. And I talk about that in that article. Uh, Frank's created a spreadsheet to keep your eye on your steps too. Well done, Frank. Um, yeah, great. Uh, now, you can also search for people, content and companies. So when you type something in the search box, I showed you before the Google advanced search, but if you type in LinkedIn, you can look at people, companies, jobs, groups, posts, courses, events, schools, services, or if you click on all filters, you will then get this second screen and then you can sort by those variables plus these variables. So there's quite a lot of depth that you can go to with a LinkedIn search provided you're connected to lots of people. So again, that's the reason why I encourage you to connect with more people. Now, I ran an event this morning and a person who came along had gone to a prestigious Melbourne private school, but had only mentioned his university studies on his LinkedIn profile. So I gave him a tip and said, I think it would be a good idea for you to mention that secondary school because then he would appear under the alumni of that school. Now, also, my, I've met various people, including myself, who started studying at one place and left the course because it wasn't meeting my needs and then moved on to another place. So I was in TAFE doing a business certificate in banking and I moved to the University of South Australia to do a Bachelor of Business in Administrative Management, which was much more aligned with what I wanted to study. But I have mentioned both of those on my LinkedIn profile. So I'm part of the alumni of TAFE SA as well as UniSA. Uh, Claire uses that filter a lot with students. If they're interested in a new course, we can snoop around and see what jobs those graduates end up in. Excellent, Claire. Also on the My Future website, it does indicate per job title what roles are going to be available in the future in those industries. So one person I worked with was a broadcast engineer from South America. When we looked it up on My Future, most people in broadcasting were not engineers. They were just, you know, people wearing black shirts who'd learned on the job kind of thing. So we filled in her LinkedIn profile because we knew that if most people didn't have degrees, they probably wouldn't have a LinkedIn profile. So if she had a comprehensive profile on LinkedIn and nobody else did, then she could get a gig. And that's exactly what she got. And she ended up as a broadcast engineer here in Australia. So definitely worth uh, doing that research. The other benefit of looking at other people's profiles in that industry is looking at their keywords and the experiences they've used. And if you've got any of those similar experiences, popping those on your LinkedIn profile as well. So there are lots of other features on LinkedIn, uh, apart from just posts in the news feed. You can write articles and they will stay there kind of forever and potentially appear in Google search results. So that can be really good. You can also run LinkedIn events. You can go to LinkedIn events. You could set up a newsletter if you've turned on creator mode or a newsletter via your company page. You can start up polls. Then I'm not a huge fan of polls, but they're available and they can sometimes be helpful. That's a good way to get some warm leads if it's not too salesy. Uh, you can put up video and also audio files. You can send video messages on LinkedIn. You can send audio messages on LinkedIn. So there's a lot of different things that you can use on LinkedIn to engage with the right people and stand out as somebody a little bit different to the rest. I do recommend that you update your LinkedIn profile at least every 12 months. And I also recommend that for your favourite people, and if you like my content and you're connected to me, 
If you click on the notification bell, then you're more likely to see my content in your newsfeed. You won't see all of it, but you're more likely to see it. So Dunbar's number suggests that we can realistically maintain about 150 relationships, but with LinkedIn, we can be connected to thousands of people. But if we can keep in touch with those VIPs, those people who are really special to us, then we can engage with their content and acknowledge their efforts. So, you know, maybe your manager, uh, the CEO of somewhere you'd like to work, if you can connect and then make them a VIP. If they put out a post, you can engage with it. That's going to help them remember. In fact, there was this one person who kept visiting the CEO of XYZ company, their LinkedIn profile, and he kept applying for jobs and he kept missing out. And then one day they rang him and said, would you like to work for us? And he said, yes, please. That's because he'd been so persistent over such a long time. Now, adding connections. So now it's time to bring out your LinkedIn uh, app on your phone because we're going to scan codes. I, in fact, I'll, I think I do that right at the end. But um, yeah, you can, when you're meeting people face to face, you can do this, but you can also put it on your slides. If you're doing a presentation or a, uh, a document or something like that, um, you can put your QR code on there and then people can scan it and pick it up. Uh, I've got another little anonymous message. Thanks, loving the tips. How I can be smart and appropriate identify people looking to make career changes for offering support. Yeah, that's a good question because a lot of people who are thinking about changing careers are probably not going to mention it because they don't want to jeopardise the job that they are currently in. Now that sideways careers article, I'll just pop it in the chat again, along with my social follows, um, talks about this and, whoops, sorry, I've hit the scroll button instead of the, the thing in the WhatsApp. Let me just put this back in for you in the chat. That sideways article is there. And um, it says that apparently 68% of people are looking to change their career at the moment. And I think a lot of that has been triggered by um, COVID <laughs> and, you know, people who don't want to go back to working from the office because they kind of like working from home or, you know, lots of different reasons. People are really seriously doing it. So what I'd like you to think about is what type of people can you help the most? Now, one of the categories of people that I can help is people who are from other countries. So if I'm putting out information that is suitable for people from other countries or Australians returning from overseas and they see my content, then they're much more likely to reach out to me. So they're my ideal audience. Now, if it was somebody in school trying to work out what they should study in their final years to get into that career, I am not the career expert for that person because I don't know what subjects are best for what courses that's not my area of expertise so my content would be very different so always think about the audience you're trying to reach because that's what's important um okay and we have linkedin qr codes added to your conference presentation yes now elizabeth don't forget you can also go to google and use a qr code generator so let's say you have a contact page on your website where it doesn't just link to LinkedIn, it links to your TikTok and your YouTube and your, all your others at the same time. Then you can get the link to that page of your website. You put it in the QR code generator and then the QR code that you put on the screen is to your contact page and then people can go click, click, click and connect to all of your socials at the same time. Uh, not, Saray is not changing jobs. Keen to learn more tips about using LinkedIn and your session was excellent. Oh, thank you, Saraya. Uh, going to a meeting. Okay, see you next time. And your teachings about Google and others. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I do quite a lot of teaching on Google. So um, yeah, because you wouldn't be able to get there without it. So anyway, I did have this, this screen here. So to get to that QR code, you press in the search box and then you press the little dots on the right-hand side and then you're, you choose scan and you turn on your camera access. So this is for an iPhone, on an Android it'll be slightly different, but you just turn it on. And then, uh, so there's a little switch for turning on the camera. And then you hover your phone over the other person's QR code 
And, and it's really good to do this at networking events because it helps the conversation flow and you don't have to carry a business card and you're showing them a new trick they've never seen before. It works really, really well. Now, when you scan their code and their profile comes up on your screen, you do not press the blue button, you press the three dots. And then when you press the three dots, you can choose personalize invite. So then you say, nice to meet you at the XYZ event. And then that way, when they receive the invitation to connect, they can say, oh yeah, that was that person I met at the event. And it also means that if you put in a word there, like this morning I ran Campbellwell Network, if I scan all my messages for Campbellwell Network, I can see the people that I met at that event. So again, really nice to personalize the invite. So press the three dots uh, and that will help you get there. Thank you, uh, Lee, for your saying it's an amazing session. I am an educator. I love teaching. And because I love teaching, I also love learning because otherwise, how can you teach? And what I really dislike is you go to some webinar and it's a sales pitch the whole time and they take forever to tell you anything useful. So mine are jam-packed with lots of information. So yeah. Now, the next thing is to set your goals. And uh, if you don't know what your goals are, it can be very hard to achieve them. And you might want to set some big, hairy, audacious goals. You might say to yourself, I want to uh, engage with 10 posts a week and connect to 10 people in my area of expertise and say, that's what I'm going to do. And then put it in your spreadsheet and tick it off uh, and whatever. So this is the open to work page um, where you can see those media links there. And thank you, Rita saying an amazing and insightful session. Uh, I really channeled the career changer in my mind before I wrote this. So every one of my LinkedIn Insight webinars is slightly different, designed for that particular audience. Now, if you're still in a job or you're going to go into a new job, you may need to abide by a social media policy. Now, a lot of people know that this exists, but nobody knows where it is. <laughs> so definitely see if you can find out what it is. They may have a strategy. They may suggest that you need to do certain things on your LinkedIn profile when you take on that role. But remember that your LinkedIn profile belongs to you. One law firm I went to had a very arrogant owner who said that everybody had to delete their LinkedIn profile when they joined his firm. Well, that's not on. That's absolutely not the right way to handle it. You can hibernate your profile. You can hide your profile. If there's personal circumstances mean that you want to just take some time out uh, or you, you have a safety concern, but you don't need to delete your account. So please keep some of these things in mind. Um, also, you might be leaving the past behind you, but it's always good to leave on a good basis. So I'll tell you another quick story. And there was this guy I met and he was working in the Department of Defence uh, in the military. And prior to joining the military, he had worked in private business. So as you can imagine, the world of private business is very different to the world of the military. And he decided he had to get out. It just was not his thing. But I said to him, if he rocks up for a new interview, he said, oh, I've got to get out of the defence force, you know, they're a bunch of idiots or whatever, that would not look good and he would not go well transitioning back into private enterprise. So... What we did is we reflected on some of the amazing things he had been able to do whilst he was in the military. He was going out in tanks through rural Victoria uh, and he got to go in helicopters and you know all sorts of amazing things he did while he was in the military. And he learned some great stuff. He had some really good mentors. So apart from the fact that overall it wasn't for him, we actually identified the things that were fantastic. And then what we had to do is identify what he wanted in his next organisation. So he had to have dealt with his military background and look specifically for the right type of organisation. So not just any job to get out of the military. He had to look for an organisation that would value his experience from both military and private practice and would be understanding of what he can bring to that new organisation. So there's some tips here on what to do before you quit your job, and also, if you've got to sack someone, there's a way to do it. So, you know, if you were sacked and those things didn't happen, then you will then understand why you're feeling so negative about what happened, you know. So 
The reason I was angry for six and a half years after getting sacked when I was pregnant is because I didn't have a voice. I didn't explain how I felt. So what I did is I read this book on radical forgiveness and I realised that what I had to do was speak my voice. <laughs> so I wrote them this letter and I said to him, look, I understand it was for business reasons and I'm not going to sue you, but I really need you to know that I was very upset and I was very, you know, hurt by what had happened. So what I'd like you to do is acknowledge receipt of this letter so that I know that you got it and you read it um, and, you know, we'll all move on. And so they did. They sent me a letter back saying we've received it and then I was no longer angry. But I had to deal with the disappointment of what had happened in the past. And I've, I've had to do this for a number of people going through career change. There are good and bad aspects to every job. It doesn't matter which job it is. But I work on the 80-20 principle, the Pareto principle. If it's 80% good and 20% average, that's good enough. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. No job, even if it's the dream career, will be perfect. Uh, but if it's 80%, you know what, that's an A. So that's good. Now, the next thing you can consider doing is writing those articles. As I said before, don't worry about your spelling or typo or your language. It's your story. It's fine. But make sure you keep a copy because I wrote a whole bunch of answers for Quora.com and they got deleted. So always keep a copy. The way I do it is I email a copy of what I've written to myself and I also put it at archive.org. Vicky has to leave. Thank you. Uh, continue to succeed. I will. Thank you, Vicky. Elizabeth, how do we manage connection requests from overseas when we don't know them? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Elizabeth, depends on your purpose. So if they're aligned with your purpose and you've set your criteria, uh, you, can, you can choose and say, no, thanks. Or if you just want to build your network, you can say yes. And if they become a nuisance, you can remove them. So entirely up to you. Okay, so if you are going to be out there in your own business or you've already got your own business, uh, Charmaine's learned a lot today. Excellent, great to hear. Um, you will eventually need a website, but if you want your website to rank in Google search results, you also need to be active on social media. So I'm gonna suggest be active on LinkedIn. We can thank uh, Donald Trump for making Twitter indexed on Google. So if you're on Twitter, every tweet is indexed. So if Google identifies a website and then social media accounts and they're all the same person, then what they will do is they will say, this person is active online, therefore this website will rank higher. What you also need to do is get online reviews. You also need to have listings on other directories and you also need to have links on other websites. So as a professional member, if you get a profile page on that website, that can really help your Google internet presence. And then what you also need to do is tell Google where you are online. So if you tell Google where you are, then Google's more likely to be able to find you. Now, for those of you who are authors, if you have an ISBN for your book, which is sort of the book number, and you Google your name and the word author, you should have an author profile on Google and you can claim that and add that to your Google account. And again, Google prefers content produced by authors. So that can be helpful to you as well. And the Pareto principle holds true for everything we come across in professional and personal lives. Nothing is 100% perfect. There's no perfect job too. So true. Yes, but there are jobs, Frank, that are values aligned, strengths aligned, context aligned. And if you can achieve that, then you are going to live a much happier life. I saw a post from a connection of mine this week and he had to give up his business because he's suffering from motor neurone disease. And he said it was a victory for the disease. And I said, no, it's a victory that you've spent your life doing your life's work that you love. That is the victory. So if you're considering a career change, um, if you can do it in small steps, that's what I definitely recommend, not overnight. And I definitely do not recommend you buy a franchise unless you've worked in that franchise because Boy, oh boy, a franchise is completely different to a job. So please don't rush out and do one of those. I um, think you found your passion alignment at last in change management. Well done, Elizabeth. Isn't it such a great feeling when you, you feel connected? But what's been really interesting for me is my career started in banking and it has been great because I am risk averse, but also I understand risk. So, so that's great. I don't spend money unless I get a return on my investment. 
I build assets, not liabilities. You know, many, many things that have come from my banking career that I can apply to what I do now. And that ended in 1994, which is a long time ago. So all of our experience is valuable. It's never too late. No time is ever wasted. But boy, if we can make our time count, that's the opportunity we have available now. As I said earlier, consistency is the key. Please abide by the LinkedIn user agreement. You're not allowed to spam people. You're not allowed to annoy people. Um, you cannot automate on LinkedIn. That is against the LinkedIn user agreement. Um, and please keep learning. If you get a local library card in Australia, you can get access to the LinkedIn learning courses, which are generally very, very good uh, for free. So that is definitely worthwhile and it might help you consider it. Another quick story I'd like to share is somebody I met at a career expo. And believe it or not, she was a young person who was also in banking, but she wanted to fly planes, which is something very different to banking. So she was there with her mother and her mother was a bit anxious about paying for a pilot's license course because that is a lot of money. So I suggested that this banker go out and do 10 flying lessons, which is a lot cheaper, and see whether she really, really likes it. Because in 10 lessons, you're going to know this really is it for me or it really isn't, but at least you know. And I think that experimenting with a few different things is a great thing to do. Um, what are my thoughts on the skills section for every position? Um, don't overwhelm the reader with too many skills per position, but if you're really trying to optimise your skills to attract certain opportunities, you could use it quite strategically, Sally. That would be my advice on that one. Uh, in finance and banking, a lot of what you said resonates with me. Thank you. Yeah. I'm risk averse and a perfectionist. Yep, I got that. Uh, do the Pareto principle. Yeah. Uh, and in education, yeah. Look, I've, I've worked with a lot of people in a lot of different industries. This is another reason I love being a gigster because so many things cross-pollinate and can be used across industries. We're not all that different, believe it or not. Um, there's many things we share with one another. If only we had the chance to talk about it, that would help. So how do you manage your activity in 20 minutes a week? Well, we're definitely over the one hour here, so we'll just quickly scroll through these, log in and engage with the newsfeed, check out your notifications, uh, look at your network connection requests and perhaps invite others as well. Visit and engage with the content of your connections, your VIPs, um, edit and update your own profile, pop something in the newsfeed, check out your stats uh, and subscribe to my newsletter if you want to be kept up to date. Now, for those of you who are perfectionists, all I want you to do is pick three things from something you've learned today and do them in the next three hours, or if you need a bit longer, you've got three days. But there's some evidence to suggest that if you don't do something within 72 hours, you will do nothing. So please go through the slides, take out three things and just do them today if you possibly can. I really encourage it. Um, more... But of late, I've learned there's a huge myth now. I believe continuous improvement rather than perfection. Absolutely. Keep learning, keep trying, keep experimenting, keep failing. Uh, it's, it's all good. Uh, lawyers are similar to academics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Denny. Session's been good. Wow, great feedback. I'm uh, going to send my husband your way. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> uh, for professional services, I hope, Claire, not, not for anything else. Uh, today's recording will be online later today on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And my publications is a very long list. So search by keyword if there's something specific you want to find. If you prefer video, I'm accumulating those on the videos page. The next seminar will be on LinkedIn for salespeople. Uh, my other presentations that are coming up, including that Australian Society of Authors, is listed on that link. And if you mention this webinar when you book, I'm happy to give you a 10% savings on my services, which are listed on my website at the moment for $175 per hour. Here's a link to all the previous ones if you just want to click to one in particular. Um, as one of you mentioned, the LinkedIn for Creatives was a lot to go through. Um, yes. Denny, somebody said for a neurodiverse person, they loved this presentation because they can click on links afterwards. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the goal. 
every webinar I run, I give you an update on my numbers. So if you look back over the old ones, you'll see how my numbers have changed. I'm being completely accountable for what's happening. You can see I'm a lot more popular on LinkedIn than these other platforms, uh, but I'm still there. So um, yeah, that's all good. Don't forget, you can download my books at ResearchGate or via that link latest offer on my website. I do apologize for the slight messiness of my website. Um, it was hacked recently and the images have been taken out. So it doesn't look good, but I'm hoping that tomorrow I'll be launching a brand new website. I've been editing it extensively. So uh, hopefully from uh, Friday, you can see a new website and I'd love any feedback you've got to offer from it. But the links, those important links that are all in this presentation will all be there. And uh, please add any questions in the chat now if you want. I'm going to turn off the screen. You will be visible on the recording if your screen is on when I come out of this share screen. Uh, so if you don't want to be visible on the recording, just don't turn your camera on, but you can just unmute your mic and still say that. Uh, you're welcome to say thank you by endorsing my skills on LinkedIn or writing a recommendation or a Google review. I got one review from the last workshop, so let's hope I can get another one from this webinar. Uh, you can also share a social media post and let other people listen to this webinar. Everything I do is designed to be shared. You're more than welcome to share it with anybody who would find value from it. And here's my QR codes, one for my contact page and one for a Google review. Uh, thank you so much for information and learning, great insights, very different <laughs> okay, I uh, decided to join. Thank you, amazing. Google review done. Thank you, Claire. Much appreciated. Oh, there's my, there's my one for this webinar. That's fantastic. So I'm about to take off the screen share. So um, feel free to just raise your hand with a little uh, Zoom emoji so that I can see you'd like to ask a question. I'm happy to stay as long as you need, although at 6.30 I'm running another presentation, so I won't be here that long. Uh, and um, uh, let's see what else people have to ask. No question is stupid, please remember that. And if you were thinking of the question, there's probably at least 10 other people who were thinking of it as well. So you're most welcome to answer it, uh, you know, ask it. So uh, let me know, just raise your hand, as I said, with the reactions button or just unmute and um, you can have the floor. Or put your question in the chat. Uh, any tips for networking on LinkedIn? Uh, yes, I have an article. So if you go to suelson.com slash publications and type in networking, you will see lots of articles there. Um, one of the ones that I found really interesting recently is I'm a member of the Career Development Association Australia. And there was a big announcement about the CDAA changing their logo. So lots and lots of people liked that post because it was big news. Now, I had run a webinar specifically for career development professionals. So what I did was I scrolled through the people who had reacted to that post and anybody who was a second or third connection, I invited them to connect with me and I sent them the link to that recording. And yeah, that was a really great way to network because, you know, that was something helpful that I could send to them. Uh, wish you knew me earlier, but never too late. No, it's never too late. I just came at the right time now that you're ready for it. So it's all good. Um, and yeah, feel free to check out any of my other content. There's lots of it out there. And I'm also happy to take suggestions. If there's something you want me to talk about that I haven't talked about before, um, always message me and I'm happy to do that. Now, Marg is unmuted. Did you have a question, Marg? No, maybe just on the phone. Does anybody else have a question? Nice to see you here, John McCaskill, uh, who's a recruiter who has endorsed my books. So nice to see you here. Seema, yes, hello. Yeah, hello. It's not a question. As, as I run LinkedIn for um, as well uh, for my clients, yes. uh, one thing that they come, especially because they are migrants, I work with migrants, and they say, oh, how can I uh, connect with um, people? So I take my other side, my other hat as a clinical hypnotherapy every time or career uh, counselor, every time when I, I have 
an event coming up and or like a conference or anything that I have a list of presenters mm -hmm. I find them on LinkedIn Me I too. send a message and say hey I'm looking forward to uh, watch your presentation or to get to know more your work so in connecting straight away so if we start the conversation this way when you have something to say about instead of just sending the default message that oh, LinkedIn yes. is so boring <laughs> That's a terrific suggestion. And the other thing I would suggest that people do in that process is they might like to mention, I'm looking for a career as an X, Y, Z. If you have any information to share, could you please let me know? So you're not saying give me a job. You're yeah. saying, please just send me information. So let's say you connected with Roger and you send that message to Roger. And then when he connects, you say, thank you, Roger, for connection. You know, I really appreciate it. And as I said before, if you've got any information to share, that'd be fantastic. So let's say Roger says, look, sorry, uh, nothing available, but you should go and speak to Ian. And so then when you go and reach out to Ian, you say, Roger sent me. Now that is a referral. So when you speak to Ian, you've basically got the same relationship as what you had, he has with Roger. Better. and that is real gold Powerful. Yes. yeah the other thing I do when I look at maybe Ian's profile is I look and see who is Ian so is he some corporate high flyer who doesn't volunteer anywhere and it's all about him 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 he's not going to help me right That's but true. if Ian was the kind of guy who helped out at the kids footy team and he was a professional member of the association and he worked in the same country as I had, Ian's going to be really receptive to me reaching out to him and saying, you know, Roger sent me, um, have you got any tips? So yeah, look at the person's profile too. Um, another quick story I can share to that is I was working with this amazing Frenchman who had come to Australia and had a part-time job because his wife was the expat. She was the big senior leader in automotive. And he had this part-time job, but my job as a net expat consultant was to help him find a full-time job. Now, he had huge management accounting experience, but he didn't have CPA Australia qualifications. So no recruiters in Australia would look at him because he didn't have CPA Australia qualifications. So we went hunting on LinkedIn to find someone who could give him a referral. And we found a guy who spoke French, who had worked overseas and was in a large consulting firm. And we joined up and connected them and they went out for coffee. He referred him to a job in a manufacturing company here in Australia that did business overseas. And he was offered a full-time $150,000 a year job as a management accountant, even though he didn't have CPA qualifications all because we found the right person to refer him in to that role. So yeah, being strategic about your networking is really important. And everything is gets, um, and normally is how you get someone send you an invite, uh, which kind of invite do you accept? So Correct. Why is the same, right? So yes. what you're not hear from others when they reach out to you. So it's the same when you approach people that want to connect with. Absolutely. and. The, the skills to get a job are very different to the skills to do a job. And a lot of people forget this. So if you can learn these skills, how to get referrals, how to network, how to apply, you know, more successfully, then you're, you're more likely to get the job, even if you don't have that, you know, 100% experience. 60% is enough. Um, yeah. Um, thank you, Seema. Great question. Uh, great, great observation and, and share. How do you manage your presentation? Talk to it and read and respond to chats at the same time. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, that's because I've been doing it a long time. Believe it or not, um, <laughs> I have been in the online world since 2001 and I was doing Zoom a long time before Zoom came. Well, I was doing Skype a long time before Zoom came. So, yes, I've got a lot of practice and I also uh, co-facilitate webinars for an amazing woman called Venita Dahia, who's an integrative medicine pharmacist uh, specialist. And yeah, I love helping her with her webinars and I manage the chat and I get people really engaged and, and do all that as well. So yeah, thanks, John. Lovely to see you. We must catch up soon. It's been ages since I've seen you. So it would be lovely to see you. Uh, commendable indeed, should say a great sense of being mindful. Yeah, I am really... Uh, I spend a lot of time thinking about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. 
And my first website was for newcomersnetwork.com. Uh, and because of COVID, obviously I stopped running uh, monthly events in the city because, you know, people were not going to the city, they weren't going anywhere. Um, but now that I've passed on Campbell on Network in November and I'm wrapping that up, um, I really would like to get back into helping those new arrivals because there's an enormous amount of untapped talent out there of people, uh, English speaking arrivals, are the ones I specialise in, uh, to, to get roles aligned with their incredible value. Uh, because it, I'm, it really frustrates me that they, they don't get the opportunities they could have simply because they, they don't have those career search skills. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions, comments, shares? Uh, if there's not something you want to say in front of the whole group, you're welcome to message me directly. Oh, Elizabeth's done a Google review as well. My goodness, two Google reviews. That's exciting uh, from one webinar. That's excellent. Using the terminology career research access, it was great for identifying yourself, but what if you're really unsure about what sector, how do you label yourself? Okay, Julia, um, try and think about what skills you want to be using. And there was one guy I worked with and he told me he had cancer. And I didn't say, oh, what cancer is it covered? You know, like I didn't go into all that. I said, what did you learn? And he gave me this most beautiful answer about, well, I got into raw foods, I studied French and Italian, I did some travel, I understand that I could support my partner better. I mean, it was amazing what he told me. It was like the cancer came along to give him a sabbatical and to give him time out to think this was actually before COVID. And it was amazing. Uh, so. <laughs> try doing that how to choose your next job or career mind map because once you are clear if, 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 if you don't know what you want you're not going to be able to get it and John will be able to talk to this and, I, and I'll let you add a comment here John because you've worked in recruitment and you've probably got some things you can add to this but in every religion in every faith in every belief system all of them say ask and you will receive. But if you don't ask for something specific, how can you get it, right? So you say, I just need a job, I just need a job. Well, okay, we'll get you to do cleaning. Well, yeah, is that what you wanna do? Oh, I will if I have to, but it's not really what I wanna do. And look, I'm not denying cleaners are an amazing resource. And some people go into cleaning because they love cleaning and some people do it because they need time out. So, I'm not saying any career is a bad career, but the clearer you are on it, before you put that content on your profile, you know, the better. Now, if you're not sure, put what you know now and then uh, over time, just think more about it and um, you'll definitely get to it. Uh, I just study I've done a financial case matter to no jobs. There is no funding. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Julia. Yes, um, one of my clients wanted to do financial counselling in the country and that was really difficult. So this is where you look at the context and you say that the context is, even though I'd love to do financial counselling, there's no funding for it at the moment. So the reality is I've still got to pay the bills. So could I work for a financial planner or somebody else for now um, and then move into financial counselling on the side or work on a payment plan system or something like that. Um, or if I can't counsel people for financial reasons, maybe I can counsel them in another area. Uh, volunteering at Anglicare, yeah. Look, I'm really sorry to hear that, Julia. If only there was more funding for things. My ultimate goal in life is to do everything I do on a voluntary basis, <laughs> because then I could choose all the things I wanna do without having to be worried about the money. Uh, but we can definitely find ways to make money so we can still do those things. So there are always other ways to go about it. Um, you might be able to find somebody who's got a lot of money and say, look, we'd like to set up a foundation. It's to help people who, let's say, for instance, older women who've been left by their partner for someone younger who are now, you know, in financial distress and they can't get work and we wanna set up financial counselling and counselling for this group. 
and we'd like to fund the project. These are the systems we're going to implement. This is what we're going to do. We'll, we'll provide this reporting. What do you think? And you never know. You might be able to be funding it yourself, you know, if you can get together a group of people. So there's always more than one way to do things. So, so keep that in mind. Now, John, your thoughts. If somebody doesn't know what they want to do, what would you suggest? Yeah, look, I, I certainly agree that um, it's far better to have an absolute definite vision of what, what you want to do and, and really go for it and make sure you fulfil the qualifications to be considered for it rather than a shotgun approach where uh, people say, well, this person doesn't really know what they want. Mm. So I, cer I certainly agree with everything you've said there. Um, the other thing, uh, if I may just add too, uh, and forgive me, if, I don't think you touched on it, but when you're going through a LinkedIn profile um, and you, you'd sort of scroll down and you see where somebody's worked, quite often you don't know that business. And if they include perhaps a link to the website of that business, uh, it's very really helpful to somebody to be able to get onto that link and then say, gee, that is relevant to what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. I actually include a section which says achievements, tasks and a description. So you put in a brief description and then I'd suggest in the media section, you put that link uh, or you put a link to their video, which says, you know, here's what XYZ yeah. does. That, that can be really helpful. And very particularly helpful. for you, Julia, you could put the one to Anglicare um, so even though you're volunteering, you can put it in your professional experience and people can see that you've, you've done that. Um, yeah. Um, do it for struggling artists. Look, Julia, we can't help anyone unless we help ourselves first. Like, please never forget that. <laughs> so make sure your own needs are taken care of first and then all those additional things, you know, can be considered over time. Um, yeah. Thank you. Any final questions? And thank you for your thoughts there too, John. Great to hear from you. Thanks. And John's had a lot of experience recruiting people over many, many years. So if you get a wishy-washy person in an interview, you're not going to recommend them for the job. Um, so Thanks, Sue. Lovely to see you. Nice to see you too. Any final questions? And thanks to all of those who are still here. Uh, this is our longest session. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really interesting topic. All right, if there's no more questions, I'm gonna say fare thee well. As I said before, if you wanna save the chat, just press the three dots and you will be able to see all of that. Um, and of course the recording is going to be available. And if you've got quick questions, you're always welcome to shoot those through to me. Thank you for those who've done reviews and I look forward to seeing you on another LinkedIn Insight webinar in the future. Thanks and bye for now. <laughs>